And now I'll go through the setup of the L-shaped anvils for uh, internal measurement on, on setting rings. So our attachments look like this. There is a left and a right, which can be denoted by the, the locking handle facing towards the user. And these just slide right on top of the standard anvils. Pretty tight fit there, you might have to wobble it a little bit. And there is a step in the back side so that they locate vertically relative to the anvils. Just want to make sure this is good and snug. And these do have a small carbide measuring ball contact on the inside. So the right one slots on the same way. Again, you do want to lock the the carriage and the spring-loaded carriage before you go mounting anything, just so you're not banging it around. And those are, be sure to unlock. And you generally want to run three to four newtons worth of force for this measurement. I'm going to dial this down to three. And you do want to make sure you do that before the reference measurement is made. So for our reference ring today we'll be using a 40 millimeter master ring. So this just gets mounted on the table here. We do want to lock that to the table with our quick clamps. And you want to loosen these two side knobs to give it some float because if it's locked to the table if we don't have that float opened up it can't come into contact with the left anvil. And just a litmus test to make sure we're set up right, you want to make sure that the left side is able to pass the position of the left anvil, which this does handsomely. And we can roll in close and crank the Z up to the level at which we want to check. <clears throat> now we have to use a master ring here because you know, our contact points on the outside. You can't, uh, you can't roll those in to touch each other to zero out. So you need some sort of a, a reference master. So once that's at the proper depth, we can roll this out slowly. And when that comes into contact with the left side, we'll start drawing down to our reference line here. So that's, that's our force reference. When these two lines line up, it means you're deflecting this the same amount every time. You get that nice repeatable measuring force to take out any any uh, variation based on flex in the arms. So we're at our proper force. Um, now we can play with the tilt to make sure we're at our smallest measurement. So if you picture a cross section of the ring as a, as a square, if you're tilted, your line of measurement is going to be larger. So we want to play with the tilt until we, until we find our smallest number. So that's this knob here, and I'm moving that quite a bit, and it didn't move much at the start. If you're at a position where that doesn't move a whole lot, you're probably right on square or as close as you need to be. Um, <clears throat> next we want to sweep for our reversal point in the y-axis, so we're going to be going around the perimeter of the ring looking for the widest point. That's our, that's our diameter measurement. So we just want to play with the Y until we find the largest number that it'll go to. Again, we haven't set a reference yet. That's pretty close there. I'll wind back and come at it from the same direction. I think it went as high as 15, 16. Okay, and now I'm making little tweaks and it's not moving, so we're, we're at the peak there. So next, so we know we're positioned at the center line on a nice square ring. So now we want to take the size of our master ring and plug that in as a preset. So we press the question mark button here. Type in 40 millimeters because we're on millimeter resolution and this is a metric ring. So four zero, because this is a nice round number, I don't have to enter anything past the decimal place. So I can just hit this bottom right button to lock that in as our new preset value. And once that's entered, I could just hit preset, and that's applied to our x-axis readout. A note about the presets, if you have a handful of master rings that you constantly use, 
You can enter those in, each in as presets. There are nine different presets here, so you don't often have to go back and type in those sizes every time you want to preset the gauge. So now with our, with our anvils preset, we can release the measuring pressure. We would generally at this point swap to the, rip, the, the ring you actually want to measure and come back out. Since I haven't moved anything, this should repeat right to 40, which it has done here. Give or take a couple tenths of a micron. I think given the environment, we can, we can uh, allow a little bit of that. But uh, that's how you'd use the, the L-shaped anvils to measure a setting ring.